Uh, what I want to do is to present uh, this project, but I'm not alone. Um, I'm, as, as uh, Xavier mentioned, we are collaborating with uh, people from the labs, from uh, Paris, uh, Nokia the labs officially right now. So this is the team that right now we are working on, on this project. Um, Federico and Carla from, as my, and myself from, from, from here, and, uh, and Roberto Di Pietro and, and Matteo Signorini uh, from Paris. He is uh, an alumni of here at the UPF. He was with us six months ago defending uh, his, his thesis. So, and I would like also to mention uh, these two other people that also are from here, from, from, uh, from Pompeu Fabra. Uh, Rafael, uh, as we probably uh, will need to deal with some with, uh, machine learning uh, stuff, he's going to uh, help us a little bit on, on that, especially because we already are, collaborate, are collaborating in, in a project on a uh, doctoral uh, PhD uh, with Alberto, that is the the person on, on the top. So, okay, the, this is the agenda for the next for the talk. Uh, after introducing a little bit on, on on Internet of Things, not that much. I will try to emphasize, if it's possible, even more uh, the security and privacy risk that it has. Uh, this uh, um, Elisa put me in a nice uh, way to to skip somehow this part. And then I will uh, explain a little bit what blockchain technology is, explain a little uh, some, some details, some building blocks. It is quite an involved uh, protocol, so what I'm going to try to do is to give the main ideas that we need to, to understand our proposal. Uh, our proposal is this AutoDAPS project, that, but it comes from this, uh, from uh, a word, multi-layered blockchain for the IoT. So I will explain a little bit on, on that and then I will move on to the project. The project began uh, two weeks, uh, two months ago. So it's just the starting. Uh, so one big part would be to explain future work and what is what we are planning to do in the next few years. So nowadays, everything is interconnected. Refrigerators, washing machines, uh, everything is wired, interconnected. And uh, the idea is that they uh, make our lives a little bit easier. But because of that, they deal with private, with private data, so and personal data, not only the um, uh, bank account numbers, but also health information. Um, as Elisa mentioned, so it's something that we should take care uh, about. Just to give you a few uh, information, a few numbers, uh, by 2020 it's expected that 26 billion of devices are interconnected forming this um, uh, Internet of Things. These are data from, from some um, recent uh, report from Gartner. And the revenue is, is going to be expected, is expected to, to be exceeding uh, three, 300 billion of, of dollars. So it's quite a bit about of money. And to, to get an idea of how it is increasing, it is doubling what is expected in two, in two years, so in, two, in 2018. And of course, there will be a lot of devices, a lot of interconnections, and the risk of security issues uh, increase a lot. This is uh, some, these are some uh, data to, to get an idea of, of the risk. Um, of, this is some collected information for a, for a recent um, report, uh, where it's mentioned that 90% of devices collect private information, which is a lot, um, a big rate. 70% uh, uh, use a kind of uh, not properly, not good enough uh, password votes, so no, not a good way to authenticate to the network. 70% uh, of the devices use unencrypted uh, data and we should not, um, we should take in, 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 in mind that uh, Usually, probably 90% of them, it's, it's personal data. And some other, like this, six out of 10 devices uh, are the, the user interface that, is, that use is, is, has some kind of vulnerability. So with that in mind, 
I would like to just uh, use this nice uh, written report by OWASP, a quite well-reputed open uh, organization, where in 2014 listed the 10, top 10 security risks. And if you have a look at it, it mentions a lot of uh, scenarios where there might be some kind of risk and they not only describe the scenario but the potential risk that it's behind the Internet of Things. And some of them are quite well-known uh, attacks. I'm not sure how familiar are you with security and attacks, but this I would say is one of the top three or top ten. Uh, three of they are in the top ten uh, popular attacks like SQL injection, herd lead or uh, cross uh, site scripting. So with that, with that brief introduction to the Internet of Things, I would like to go into detail into block, what blockchain technology is. But before that, uh, please have a look at, the, at these pictures. And uh, because somehow blockchain is behind it. Um, on the left side, we have the Britannic and uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica, which uh, Britannic Encyclopedia, sorry, Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, which uh, basically how it uh, generates information. So they hire some people and these people create content, they put all the content together, they sell and people that buy got the information. How it is done in Wikipedia? So in Wikipedia content is created in a di very distributed way. There is nobody managing how the information is created. So everything is there are like more than more than two twenty? I would say it's twenty thousand um, twenty thousand people uh, that are actively collaborating in creating the content on the Wikipedia. Not only uh, not only that, but also I, I think it's twenty thousand. Maybe I, I'm slightly wrong, but it's a, like a very big number. The point is that not only that, so they, they, cre they create the content in a, very, um, in a very distributed way and also it's much more efficient. Here there is any, it's really surprised how if there is any, uh, any change, here is suddenly uh, updated where on the other hand it's quite difficult to, to update. So with that in mind, basically I would say that internet has a lot to use this kind of um, way to create content in a very distributed way uh, using Wikipedia. And I would say that blockchain can do quite a lot of things for some other scenarios. What is a blockchain? Um, again, trying to skip a lot of details, not to uh, and, and give the main ideas of, the, of what it is. Uh, in a blockchain, we have uh, an action that we have to, that you want to perform. And we will manage to do it interacting uh, once with, I mean, interacting between different peers in a network and uh, in a network that potentially is uh, unreliable and is not, uh, is, is, and is not a trusted, um, a trusted uh, network. Somehow it can be seen as a huge document where some, where the people can access and, and can guarantee some properties as integrity, authenticity, and, and special nodes that will be called miners. I will go into details exactly what does it mean in a few minutes. Uh, we'll work together without having any idea of we are each other. Somehow this idea reminds again, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite similar to the, uh, to the Wikipedia um, case. I'm not sure how many people is familiar with blockchain, but I'm pretty sure that if I say Bitcoin, probably a lot of uh, you know what a Bitcoin is, this new uh, crypto uh, currency and this new way of payment that, uh, that was invented a few years ago in 2018. And what it does Behind the, the, the Bitcoin, behind the, the Bitcoin, there is the blockchain. Somehow the importance of the whole thing is the blockchain, especially designed for the Bitcoin. But uh, this is what, that, this is what uh, it's really uh, behind the, this new currency. 
So uh, before entering into the details, I would like to explain you a little bit on some building blocks on, on crypto, just because you get an idea exactly of what it is uh, the protocol by itself. So I'm trying to be, again, um, quite uh, not entering into the deep detail, but just a little bit so to get an idea of how, what's the key issues of the, uh, of the blockchain. So the first thing is the cryptographic hash function. What is what it is a cryptographic hash function? Basically, it's a mathematical function that uh, gets as input um, um, any can get any input of any size and produce a, a, an input of a, of a fixed size. Uh, one of the important things is that the, this output is completely random, or at least it looks like random. Of course, it's not going to be random. And take in mind that we can have an input of any size and we are producing some input of maybe 256 sites, so, so, uh, bytes. So it's going to be like uh, um, random is, is, is completely impossible, but it should be somehow of, or it, it should give us some kind of randomness. Another special, imp uh, two other special properties. The first one is that should be one way meaning that it's easy to compute, but it's very difficult to invert. And the second one is uh, this collision resistant. With the, it, there are a lot of hash functions, a lot of them with different properties. Uh, but we especially uh, this, this, this property, this collision resistant properties is special, especially interesting for, for us. Uh, what does it mean? It means, uh, for us in, in this context, uh, it means that it is infeasible to find two different outputs that give you the same output. So it is possible to find x1 and x2 uh, that in such a way that uh, the hash function of x1 is equal to the hash function of x2. This is, the crypto, this is basically what we need uh, to understand about uh, the cryptographic hash function. Two things, reminder that the output is going to be fixed length and especially it's going to be random or looks like random at least. And this collision resistant uh, property. We are not only going to deal with that, we are also going to deal with a lot of hashes and a lot of hashes put it in a, in a tree uh, as a tree, tree structure. This is a, what is called the Merkle tree. And it's a basic structure just to check if uh, any of the leaps are or not in, in a given structure. Another thing that I would like to talk, just to know that everybody is familiar with this concept of digital signature, uh, is a mathematical pro protocol to produce um, a, a, a signature, what is called a digital signature in a such a way that uh, it cannot be unforge unforgeable, so that this is really the signature that usually uh, simulates this handwritten uh, signature that you use uh, in, on, on papers. So basically it has three protocols, like the key generation protocol that produces two keys, one that is public and the other one that, is, that you, kept, you should keep secret. And then this signing, signing and verification uh, protocol. The signing with the signing um, protocol, what you do is you you do you take the uh, your document, you produce a hash. Uh, this is for efficiency uh, reasons, and and then you use some mathematical protocol using your public key. Uh, sorry, so your private key, so you produce this signature. Forget about what is inside uh, this, uh, this thing. The important thing is that you are able to produce uh, a signature, which is going to be a bunch of, of, of numbers uh, that nobody else can go, is going to be able to reproduce unless uh, this person has the, the private key, your private key. Then you attach this to your document and this is your signature. Um, why, what, do pe what can do people to, to check if this is a signature or not? Then you, you, these people uh, can use your public key, it is public, so anybody knows it and anybody can, can, can have and check if a computing document, the hash, uh, and then on the other hand, uh, the document, uh, I, sorry, the um, the signature and then using the public key 
can check if both hashes are or not the same. So basically there is a way to verify if this guy uh, has signed this or not, that's the important thing. Uh, on top of that, what is used on blockchains is not, uh, this is a, one of the most um, uh, standards on, on, on digital signatures uh, and what is used on that is the an elliptic corp version of it. Um, meaning, what does it mean? It means that here when we um, when we usually, so if we skip this EC, usually where, where we add in, we are adding numbers or we, we are multiplying, we are multiplying numbers. When we add this EC, it means that we are not uh, dealing with numbers anymore in the sense that we're used to, to we are not adding numbers, we are adding uh, points of an elliptic curve. So anytime you want to add P and Q that are numbers of an elliptic curves, that we have some geometrical procedure to get the sum which is over here. Why am I explaining this? I'm explaining this because probably if some of you know a little bit about uh, crypto, uh, then probably would say, but come on, it's, uh, you need 1024 bits to create this long key, so this is not possible for, for my device. The thing is that if, you, if we use elliptic curves, the security has to be, like, um, 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 broadly speaking, I would say that uh, if you use elliptic curves, then you get the same security, but with a very, very, very small key. So even though instead of adding numbers, we have to do a little bit more, this a little bit more is not that much, but uh, on the other hand, we can use very nice uh, size of keys and size of messages and size of everything. So everything fits much better than with the other uh, things. So after this, this point, let me explain you how the protocol goes. So to explain this, uh, I will use the Bitcoin, even though, again, what I'm doing is trying to emphasize the use of the blockchains, blockchains works, but we, we need to put something to a change, so money would be one of the options. So imagine that Alice uh, wants, to, uh, wants to pay some money to Bob. What, uh, what, should, what she should do in this blockchain with this new uh, uh, blockchain approach. Uh, first of all, there is no Alice and Bob. There is a bunch of numbers. Actually, these numbers are deduced from these points of the, of the elliptic course, but at the end of the day, this is a bunch of numbers. Alice know, knows that uh, she wants to pay something to, to, this, uh, to this person. This is gonna be the public key. The first thing she's gonna do is to create a transaction, uh, transaction record, meaning that uh, given some kind of format, she's gonna create some information uh, saying that she's Alice, she has uh, three bitcoins and she wants to pay to Bob and maybe some other uh, technical stuff and put a digital signature on that. Say, I'm Alice and I'm saying that I wanna do this for Bob. That's the first step. Uh, on, the second, on the second step, this information is brought it to all the network. So all the network receives this information and there will be an special, some special nodes, that the miners, that will perform some operation on that. Up to now, it's, let's say it's, they perform some operation. Then I will explain you somehow what's the, the, what they had to do. So the idea is that, uh, that they perform this operation and at some point there will be one of them that is succeed on the, on the operation. So uh, I will explain you in the next slide what this operation means, but it's something that is gonna be really, really tough. So they are, complete, they are computing all the time. Actually, they are usually computing because they get some rewards, some nice rewards for doing this work the whole day, so nonstop. Okay, so once every 10 minutes, actually everything is somehow calibrated to have at once every 10 minutes, um, these nodes collect not only the money from Alice, but also the money from other peers that have tried to pay something in the last uh, period of time, the last 10 minutes. And, and they do these calculations, they do these calculations and, and mention the I got the solution, so the rest of the, of the peers check 
that the solution is there. And uh, what they do is to agree on that. So they send some kind of confirmation that yes, I saw it and I think it is correct. So once this is done, this, um, this, um, what they do is create this transaction record that Alice has, uh, has sent at the very beginning is, um, is added to what is called a block. And this block, which should be over here, is added to a blockchain, meaning that is a chain of blocks that are related one after the others and that not so, nobody can, can change. Uh, once Bob has seen that there is uh, quite a lot of people that uh, confirms of that, uh, he accepts the money and uh, gets uh, this money as, as something that is uh, correct. So zooming at some other point, at some points that probably are a little bit confusing, this could be a block. This could be kind of a block. A block, remember, that is the information. So Alice sent some kind of, of transaction record that it would be like this. Alice, Bob, the address, and some other information. And the nodes collect all the ones that have been sent in the last 10 minutes. Um, compute some extra information, this timestamp, some kind of, of idea to have uh, where everything has been, uh, so some numbers that will allows, allows us to, to say when this thing has, has happened, and uh, a, a block hash that will point to the previous, um, to the previous block, so this allows, allows us to create this blockchain. And some nonce number. This nonce number is a random number that is, uh, sorry, before uh, this th, uh, this transaction root uh, that would uh, allow us to remember there are four transactions. So we have here these four transactions. So this, this is kind of the Merkle tree, the tree that will allow us to, to check if this transaction is included or not in the block. Um, with, the, with, everything, with all this information, the block hash at the very beginning is computed. How it is computed? So this is what is called a proof of work. And for me, it's the key issue for the, for the whole blockchain. Um, the thing I, t I just told you that the block hash is a hash of the nonce, the previous word hash, the, the transaction road, and the byte uh, and the timestamp. Um, the point, remember that uh, at some point in the protocol we have the sender, Alice, and we have Bob, and in the middle, when this information has been broadcast to the rest of the nodes, uh, the rest of the nodes have to do some calculations. And they have to do a lot of work on that calculation. Uh, once every 10 minutes is supposed to have, one is gonna have the solution. What is just this, this calculation? The only thing that they have to do is to compute hashes, but a lot of hashes. A lot of hashes meaning that they have to compute this block hash and try to have, uh, they have to put different random numbers, these different no nodes, in such a way that the, the result that they want to have, this hash of the block header, should be that small. So it should have a lot of zeros and then some, some number. Depending on the number, usually 40 is uh, like a 40 zeros and then something else, uh, you get more, they, they, somehow the, the way the difficulty is, uh, is established is playing with these zeros. Remember, and that's the reason I explained you before about the hash, I told you that hash was a way to put any input in a fixed number that looked random. So the point is that uh, there is no way that the nodes, the minor nodes, know how to, what should be the good nodes to produce such an output. So what they have to do is just brute force, there is nothing else. So they have to do, unfortunately, there is nothing else. If there is something, then uh, there is a, a, a bad, I mean, there is a way to cheat. So the nice thing is that the only, the only thing that they can do is the hash function is good enough, is uh, brute force. And then with this brute force, once in a while, 
like once and every 10 minutes there will be one so this is kind of a, a statistic so it, it can be computed and looked at the numbers just to see that once every 10 minutes assuming there is a lot of number a lot of people a lot of nodes computing these uh, calculations um, we'll get with the solution so remember that there was the only thing that they had to go with the solution and say hey I have the solution, don't try to compute anything more because this is the solution and the other thing, the other, the other note, the only thing that they have to do is just to check if it's correct or not. I don't know if some, if, um, does anybody of you check the blockchains, uh, so how this, uh, all this currency goes? So let me show you something that I was, the first time I saw, it was a little bit, um, I thought that how, and this is kind of, uh, on life thing, so probably it's not gonna change, it's gonna work. But if you look at the... Okay, I'm finishing. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> um, so just to show you the picture of how are the transactions right now. So apparently it would be like, uh, okay, I know this is Bitcoin, and, but it, for me, the first time I saw it was like, uh, okay, maybe some people is using, I know there is uh, some withdrawal here at Pompeo, and, but really there is a lot of, of information going around with this uh, thing. And trying to, to be quick, let me, there is a lot of applications on, on, on these uh, techniques going from uh, voting uh, solutions that are something that was especially tricky uh, for several uh, things uh, internet of things also for for health health care and let me go into the details of our proposal uh, we propose to use uh, a multi-layer blockchains to manage somehow the internet of things so the idea was uh, that you don't need to authenticate every time you try to do something, but you just go directly to the, to the device that is using, uh, that just has used just this information. So um, I think it's really difficult to explain in five minutes, but in two, it's even more difficult. <laughs> so, um, so I will go directly to to the uh, to saying that uh, this information is easy to easy. Probably Federico is not going to be so agree with me that this somehow can be translated to to a graph, and it is possible to to study quite a uh, lot of uh, information on that. Uh, I would like to also to say that this 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 is this, the the origin the origin of the idea of the project. So this is not out of but this is the be very beginning of everything. This idea was presented to the Cisco uh, Grand Security uh, IoT grand security challenge uh, and he got he, and it was, he got uh, awarded and, and right now we are working on 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 the on a paper or i'm like like the i would say the academic uh, version of, of that and again this is the um, the auto the, the proposal it is based on that with the idea of using this blockchain technology to detect malware so not only malware, but also um, any anomaly that might happen in the Internet of Things. So for any kind of anomaly, or anomaly and using the, um, the, the, the graph, so there will be like this topology analysis uh, for, for, for this graph, we will try to extract information and see uh, if there is some malware or not between different layers of the of the um, that should be divided, and I'm, I'm not going to enter into the details. Uh, right now, as it as it is the project, as I mentioned before, Federico just uh, started started two two years uh, two months ago, uh, trying to to implement. First thing was to 
collect this data and put it in, in a graph. So it should be a, tech, a, a tool that we will be using uh, through the rest of the project uh, to skip smart uh, contracts and everything. He, he's using this uh, plat open platform, Color Coins. And this is the idea to continue. So the, continue, the idea is basically this would be the, the steps that we are trying to, I mean, that we plan to, to perform in an immediate um, um, steps, I mean, time, and this somehow, like these midterm steps. This would be, Federico is, is joining us uh, doing the, the, the PhD, at PhD, and, and this would be like the first two things to, to, to look at it. And a part of this, it, there is like block blockchain technology is something really new and, and applied it to a, a different to different contexts is not going to be a, an easy way, especially because this proof of work that I mentioned that the miners do is something that is not uh, it cannot be directly translated to other scenarios. So it should be we should think about it uh, a little bit more. And, uh, behind that, there will be problems with privacy, probably because everything is public, a part of the, these pseudonyms. Uh, scaling is, is something to, to take uh, care about. And then there's uh, this thing, as I mentioned. So for the, the point uh, with the, I mentioned at some point that the miners get some reward to doing these calculations all the time. So what should we do? for other applications when there is no money behind. It's something that um, there should be, um, there, there is research to do it on, on that. And actually there is, uh, I know that game theory works working on, on that. So uh, as I mentioned, this is the people that is behind this. Um, right now, um, Mateo is, 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 is helping uh, to the develop uh, to develop this this um, this tool to Federico, and he is gonna do the his PhD under the supervision of of um, Roberto and, and myself. Um, Rafael is gonna help us with uh, machine learning and this proof of work and these other cryptographic techniques. Uh, uh, probably Carla is gonna help us as, as she's an expert on zero knowledge proofs that somehow has some relation with, with what is going on behind that. Uh, we are planning also uh, to, to ask for a joint uh, PhD European, uh, a European industrial PhD uh, in the next, uh, like, next, I think the next call is going to be in January. So that's the, the idea that, that we have in mind. And sorry for taking more time. 